Welcome everybody to a virtual junior naturalist program. My name is Samantha Russell Blumenkernig and I am delighted to be the chief naturalist at the Eagle River Nature Center. Today, we're going to learn about mushrooms or we're gonna learn about fungus. Fungus is a word that describes every single part of a mushroom, right? Fungus and or fungi, that's more than one fungus, describes the whole kingdom. It's a separate kingdom. Fungi are different than plants. Fungi are different than animals. Fungi are different than bacteria. They're their own thing. They don't follow the same rules that humans need to survive or that animals need to survive. And they don't follow the same rules that plants need to survive. So we're gonna learn a little bit about fungi. Then we are going to do a craft together. And this is something, I have templates for this craft and I'll show you in a little bit, available on our website, www.ernc.org. And I will make sure that there's a link to these templates in the comments having to do with this video altogether. But we're gonna be making mushroom paper chains. And I'm not, I might not be using the best word to describe what this activity is. Maybe some of you can drop a comment and describe it better. I've also heard mushroom paper garlands or, I don't know, it's kind of silly. But as we're getting ready for spring, I am excited for mushroom season. I love going out and foraging and finding delicious mushrooms to eat. And I love just admiring fungi. I think they're so amazing. So some of the crafts we're going to make are going to look like this. And we'll go through how to cut them out, how to make the chain, and even how to color them. Should also mention, if you are an Eagle River Nature Center junior naturalist, this can count as one of your punches on your punch card. What I need to know from you in order to get that punch is I need one of your fabulous adults to send me an email or even leave a voicemail at the Nature Center. So you can leave me a, um, an email at naturalist at ernc.org or you can leave a voicemail at 694-2108. Perfect. So, our first step, we are going to read this amazing book called We Are Fungi by Christine Nishiyama. And so I always like to read the back of the book because that gives us a summary or an idea of what this book might be about. But I bet you already have some guesses about what it can be about. And so what do you think? I bet you're right. But we are going to read the back. Enter our world, the world of fungi, the most mysterious and misunderstood kingdom on the planet. We are not plants. We are not animals. So what are we? From veiled ladies to bleeding teeth, learn how we eat, live, and control a part of the world you rarely even notice. Peek beneath the crispy leaves, peer inside your old lunchbox, and poke between your smelly toes. We're here, we're growing. Even when you think you can't see us, we always see you. So right now, I'm just messing with the camera situation. I'm not quite sure which camera is ultimately going to be recorded in Zoom. This is a note for myself. We're going to see, we're going to hope that I ultimately get both views, because then it can be kind of interesting where I zip back and forth and back and for the very least i really hope that the phone situation works out but i'm gonna put my goggles back on and here we go we are fungi Deep inside the damp, dark forest, hiding behind the spruce needles and twigs. Can you see us? Do you know us? We are some of the smallest living things on Earth, and we are some of the biggest living things on Earth. We are microscopic, and we are massive. We have pores, we have gills, we have wrinkles, we have caps. 
And I actually love this page in particular because it has a diagram of the different parts of a mushroom. So a mushroom is the fruiting body of a fungus. The strawberry is the fruiting body of a strawberry plant. The seed strawberry is the fruiting body of the strawberry plant. The spruce cone is the fruiting body of a spruce plant. The fruiting body, so the part that comes up and makes more of a fungus, is a mushroom. And easy different basic parts of a mushroom are the cap, everybody find your cap, are the gills or your pores, and they're right underneath your cap, your stalk, helps you stand tall, and your mycelium. Mycelium look like roots, and they absorb nutrients just like roots and plants do, but they're different. They're similar, but they're different. But mycelium are similar to roots. So those are some of the basic parts. Going back to the story. We are white, we are yellow, we are brown, we are pink. We look like slimy brains, we, and we look like strings of hair. Here are some examples of different fungi. Actually, this one, a bolete is one that we're going to make a paper chain out of. Maybe you'll have some ideas for how to make paper chains out of some of these others. We climb high above, and we slither down below. Perfect. So everything, this and this and this and all these pieces are fungi, but I love this diagram too because it reminds us this is the fruiting body. The part that we see is the fruiting body. We sprout up between we sprout up between dead leaves beneath the forest floor. We invade the cheese forgotten in your refrigerator door. We grow and hide between your toes. We come alive and raise your bread. Yeast is a fungus. We also live in poop. We glow green in the dark of the night and we commune in fairy rays. We bulge when the air is dripping and damp. We shrivel up when the air is parched and dry. We also have weird names like veiled lady, bleeding tooth, and chicken fungus. Here are some more examples of fungus, of mushrooms. We are hunted by frantic humans, excitable dogs, and uncontrollable pigs. We are ignored, stepped on, and often never seen. We can delight your taste buds if you eat us, and we can displease your stomach if you eat us. That's important. Not all mushrooms are safe to eat. We don't need to be afraid of mushrooms, but we need to know what we're doing. And just like anything outside, we need to be 100% sure of what we're putting in our mouth before we put it in our mouth. And if we're young enough that we travel with a fabulous adult, we need to let our fabulous adults know what we're putting in our mouths too. Back to fungi. We feed on dead things and we feed on living things. We are kind and polite. We are friends of the trees. We are selfish and rude. We are enemies of the trees. That means sometimes they help trees. Sometimes they eat trees. We keep growing and spreading our fingers to connect the plants beneath the earth. We keep growing and spreading ourselves to take over the depths of the earth. We are the kingdom of fungi. We are mushrooms, yeast, and mold. We are fungi. And now you are one of us. In the end, I like this book because it gives us some information. It gives us some easy background information to start understanding. We're not going to become mushroom experts today, but hopefully you already know more than you used to know. So before we get started, you need some pieces of paper. You need something to cut. 
and you need something to make marks on the paper with. You can get super fancy. You can just use a pencil or a pen. And if you want colors, that might be kind of fun later too. So on our website, ernc.org, there are some templates available with some information about some different kinds of mushrooms. The first ones that we're gonna go through are, and you can download something that looks just about like this, or we're gonna try a morel chain. Morels are in the genus Morshella and are one of the coolest early season um, mushrooms that we can get. A lot of people really love them and we know that they really like disturbed areas so they're a really great thing to look for if there's been a wildfire someplace that then come the next year. But we have to be careful because there are a lot of things that look like morels too that aren't as good for us and have the potential to hurt us. But either way, Morels kind of look like wrinkly brown cones. So here we go. Our first step is to draw our template and to do that accordion fold. So we're going back and forth and back and forth. Sometimes our lines don't work out the way that we were expecting, but that's okay. And I thought we were going to have some extra with this, but we don't. So, we've got our accordion folded chain. Now we're going to cut it out. My scissors. All right. So, remember, we need parts touching the edge. Curving around, curving around, getting that short little stock. Morels are definitely cone shaped. Got to make sure. And I left some right there. Let's see. Oh, bummer. Sometimes it doesn't quite work out. You unfold them. And maybe you didn't fold it quite right. Or maybe you cut off an edge. But that's okay. You can try again. And now we have two morel chains. Our next step is to color them. When I color morels, I make these shapes to give it that wrinkly look. All right. Our next mushroom is going to be in the Amanita family. Sometimes we call these toadstools. And this is the kind of mushroom that we see most often in like fairy tales and fantasies, things like that. So with this one, I encourage you to color it creatively. Oh, look, here's one right here. Usually in real life, mushrooms in the Amanita genus have either a red or yellowish or orangish cap, cap, and they have a long white stem and they have a veil. And so a veil is different than like what a bride might wear over their face, but it's really kind of just like a skirt around their stock. Not all of them have it. Some of them have them, some of it don't. There are lots of different kinds of Amanitas. They're one of the most fun ones to find. So to draw our Amanita, we're gonna make kind of a lumpy cone shape then a little bit of a veil and our stem. I put the white spots there to remind us that we have white spots. So what do we do next? That's right, we do our zigzag fold. So here we go, back and forth. I'm doing my best this time to make sure the edges line up and back. And oops, so there's not quite enough here to make a whole one. So I'm just going to snip this edge off. When you're using a sewing scissors, make sure that you're not using your fabulous adult's nice sewing scissors. So we have our accordion folded Amanita. What do we need to remember for where we cut? That's right. We don't want to cut all the edges off right on this side or on this side. 
Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Oops, I can already see that maybe I folded a little bit goofy. That's okay. We can work with it. We don't have to be perfect when we do this craft. Going around the top. And I'm leaving some room there. Coming around. Getting that nice veil. The bottom coming up the other side. Now here, as I do this last bit, I want to make sure that I'm not snipping off any edges. Do this last bit. I want to make sure that our mushroom can actually make that chain. Oops. Oh well. We still got three in a row. But, so the next step for that one is add some color. You're right. Fantastic. So I have one more template to share with you. And this one is what it might look like in a birch forest with lots of polypores or shelf fungus. So the mushrooms, the fruiting bodies that we were just drawing are mostly grow out of the ground. But we know that mushrooms grow on trees too. They grow everywhere. So this is a way that we can make some shelf fungus and draw on some birch trees. But it's not just birch trees that these fungus grow on, right? They can grow on any kind of tree. I've just picked birch because I see a lot of beautiful birch in the forest. So there. So the first thing we do is we make our template. And this one looks kind of silly, right? Because with a tree, we don't think of there being necessarily things that stick off that can connect to each other. So the fungus are going to be the pieces that we make sure not to cut, cut the edges. So this one's going to be a little bit trickier. So I drew roughly the tree and I did the outline or the silhouette of the fungi. And then I drew in some little squiggles because that helps let us know that it's a birch tree, right? When we think of birch, we think black with some white, or we don't think that birch trees are black, do we? We think of it as being white with some black spots, right? We draw our template and then we accordion fold. You got it. So we're going back and forth and back and forth and back perfect so we've got it now we cut this one's gonna be a little bit trickier so i'm gonna start on this side curving around i'm not cutting the edge of that fungus Coming back. Coming around. Ooh, this one is tricky, right? Because we don't want to make a point. We want it to have plenty of room. So I'm coming in a little bit lower than what the line is. We can always tidy it up later. Gotta be careful. This one is the hardest one, I think. So the templates are useful if you want to trace. And just for today, I have them in dark, dark, thick outlines so that we can see what's going on. But if you're doing this at home, Maybe you want to do it in pencil and you can erase it later and fix your lines because you might ultimately decide not to cut on the lines you thought you were going to cut. call that a plot twist or a plan change. And that's normal. That happens. Here's just a little bump on the tree. We're not going to worry about taking it to the edge, but this one, this is going to be a big old bracket. Perfect. And we're curving, 
making sure to leave that edge. So I'm going to come up a little bit higher than my land, my line. One more. All right. This one's tricky. Don't be discouraged if it comes apart because it's tricky to keep track of those little lines. See how it goes. Ta-da! So we remember that those lumps are the fungus. So when we go to color it in, we can color the main things like the trees, but we can add all sorts of different colors. So, hope you all have a wonderful, fantastic day, and I hope that you try this. Spring is coming, and this is a really fun thing to know more about and to learn about. Show me in the comments below on our Facebook page or wherever we are. Show me the things that you made or even send me an email. And if you're doing this for Junior Naturalist Points, be sure to let me know and I'll put a punch in your card. Looking forward to seeing you all again. Have a great day.